five of his songs. I had the pleasure of sitting down with the 71-year-old Montreal native during his visit to Toronto. Well, Leonard Cohen, great pleasure to be able to spend a few minutes with you. Oh, thanks for having me. And congratulations on the induction into the Songwriter oh, Hall of Fame. Oh, thank you very much. What a night that was. Oh, it was, it was grand, wasn't it? Unbelievable, and, and at times very emotional. I mean, when Adrian Clarkson made that introduction. We love you, Leonard. And then Willie Nelson's Like a Bird on a Wire. And Katie Lang when she did Hallelujah. 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 You said at one point that you didn't know where the poems, where the songs came from, but if you knew, you said you'd go there more often. That's correct. You know, you may keep your tools sharpened and you may turn up every day at the desk, but it becomes very, very clear that you don't command. Uh, uh, and you don't, uh, the song come unbidden. Suzanne takes you down to her place near the river. You can't produce the good lines at will. They come. Yeah. They come from elsewhere. I don't know where they come from. And the whole damn place goes crazy twice. And it's once for the devil and it's once for Christ. By the boss don't like these dizzy heights. We're busted in the blinding lights of closing time. You have done so many phenomenal things um, in your career, and the business can chew people up, and in, at times you go through and have gone through your troubles. How have you, over the years, maintained your mental, your physical health, that kind of thing? Because you, you went through a very rough time and I, then I, went I to the monastery. So. Yeah, I, I did. I, I, I mean, everybody knows a bit of trouble in their lives, and I've certainly known it myself. And. Um, and, and, and again, I don't know the process by which um, one is healed. I had wonderful teachers and, and, and great support in my life. And um, at a certain point, that background of anxiety and anguish lifted. I don't know why. And now um, you're back at work. Back at work. And well, I've always been scratching away, you know, blackening pages. And it's it's creative, um, and and but it's also there's also a financial concern because of all the the. Oh yes, uh, I, I got troubles. I got wiped out um, financially, and uh, I, I did have to you know look carefully about ways to 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 um, survive. Mm. I don't know how anybody would react to thinking that they had a five million dollar nest egg down to $150,000. But one of the things that came out about you in the process um, that people learned about was that you, you didn't live extravagantly. I, I didn't, I didn't even, you know, I didn't even know where the bank was. I never looked at a, at, a, at a financial statement. I never looked at a royalty statement. I completely trusted the, the people who were supposed to be doing that. So, uh, and it, it wasn't a virtue, but a preference to live sim simply. I, you know, I, I don't feel deprived in any sense, but I, I like a room with just a table and a chair and a bed. That, that, that makes, that's my idea of beauty. I think simplicity is really voluptuous. So now um, you're going to be in a situation where hopefully you can build up that nest egg again, pending this, you know, settlement of all the lawsuits. Um, are you are you bitter about that? No, uh, I don't know why I'm not. It's, it's there's something amusing about it too. I think because the wipeout was so thorough, it was astonishingly thorough. You know, in fact, there was almost nothing left. You know, my son said something wonderful to me. He said, "Listen, Dad, you know, you do what you have to do, but don't do it for us." because we've had a good life and we can take care of ourselves. So, you know, parents can wait whole lives before they hear something like that from one of their children. And I heard it from both my children, so. Well, it would be a testament to your parenting. Well, or, or to their characters. What kind of father have you been? Uh, you know, <laughs> it's, it's a mess like everything else. <laughs> you know, I've tried my best. But it's a learning process. <laughs> well, I mean, nobody, nobody gets it right, you know. Um, when you talk about someone's legacy and when you look at your body of work so far, 
what would your what would you like your like what you how would you like people to think of you? You know, I I, I always thought of myself in, in in a different way as a minor poet. Maybe you know, <laughs> you know, if I could have one or one poem in 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 the anthology, uh, I, it's never been one of my concerns about how I'm how I'm thought of. You know. You are so incredibly talented and so humble and such a pleasure to meet. Thank you oh, so much. Thank you very much. Did you see that bow? Yeah. So you saw in my interview, Leonard Cohen spent several years studying Buddhism. He has a book of poetry, by the way, coming out this spring, as well as a new album with his partner, Anjani. We'll be talking uh, to them when the CD comes out in May. What an incredible man. He's just a minor poet. A minor poet. You know, That's and it's just, that he would think that. and his, you know, simplicity is so integral to his life, and he 